So how does one begin to explain an agency so powerful, so politicized, so influential, that they literally are giving themselves the ability to rule this entire nation? Well, I'm going to show you how in Senate testimony yesterday, Chris Ray says things that should never be said, avoid things that shouldn't be avoided, and yet does it with a attitude and style, thumbing his nose at not only the Senate judiciary, but ultimately the American people. This is hard to believe until you watch it and you hear it and you understand the FBI has gone completely rogue. Now, before I get there, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope you'll take just a few seconds to do that. Help me share the video. Your comments are always appreciated. You guys are absolutely amazing at that. I put a new membership option up on YouTube. You'll see it pop up on your screen when you sign in. If you can support me, that helps me to bring you these videos or another means of support. You know I offer you RestrictedRepublic.com, the platform from the least place you'd expect it from. And wait till you get a hold of that information. But now we're going to cover why I make the bold statement that the FBI has gone rogue, which that's not the bold part. But they must honestly have a plan to rule this entire nation. Because Chris Ray gives it all up. A few simple questions will define that for you. But let's start first with John Ratcliffe, because I want to frame in what we're going to focus on as the portion of testimony we're going to cover today. FBI that is the primary domestic authority for investigating and leading to the prosecution of, of election influence and election interference. It's really a problem when the agency that is, that is responsible for investigating those things is engaged in those things. Talk about a strong statement. Pretty clean cut, pretty clean cut to me what he's stating there. Most every American should understand that. The one charged with protecting an interest involved in the interest. But I'm going to go to the testimony now. Senate Judiciary. And let's listen through. I'm going to highlight three parts for you. In Michigan, that case ended up an absolute debacle where the four people who went to trial, two of them were acquitted, two received mistrials. None of them were convicted on even a single charge. And the basis of the defense was entrapment that the FBI, that paid enforcements for the FBI, had suggested and had incited the conduct. Let me ask you, how many FBI agents were disciplined or reprimanded after that disastrous case and the misconduct that led to every defendant being acquitted or having a mistrial on every charge? Okay, let me step in here. He's talking about the alleged plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer, painting one party in a horrible, horrible light. But what developed out of this story was something completely different. You were meant to focus on these four, well, as they called them, radical men who hatched a plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer. The audacious plot, as many called it back then, to kidnap a sitting governor, seen by many as a precursor to the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol by hundreds of Trump supporting protesters has become one of the most important domestic terrorism investigations in a generation. Well, okay, I'll agree with that. It was one of the most important domestic terrorism investigations in a generation, but not for the reasons they are outlining here or wanted you to believe. The government has documented at least 12 confidential informants who assisted with the sprawling investigation. The trove of evidence that helped gather provides an unprecedented view into American extremism. It does give you a view into American extremism, just not with who they were pointing out. Laying out in often stunning detail the ways the anti-government group network with each other, and in some cases discuss violent action, anti-government or anti-American group or anti-freedom, or we got a many, many names we can call it here. Michigan Governor Whitner kidnapping plot, two men acquitted, jury deadlocked on two others. Wait, well, as Cruz said, I'll... Four got let go. Innocent. 
cleared of all charges. Ray comes out and says, but wait, there's, they're, they're, they're going to go after him again. But that's not the point. Why were they acquitted? The Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot looks an awful lot like entrapment. And guess what? That's what the jury thought too. FBI agent taking it further now. Released because they were entrapped ultimately. Two found innocent, two on a hung jury. FBI agent Whitmer kidnapping case arrested after allegedly beating wife after swingers party. Oh, there's the real story that starts to take fold, and I'm going to let Cruz take over again for a moment. Agent in charge of that case has now been sent to D.C., to the Washington, D.C. office, and now leads the investigation regarding January 6th. Is that correct? That doesn't sound right to me. That does not sound right. The, the, the name of the individual is Stephen D'Antuno. He was, he was run out of the FBI Detroit field office. And by the way, I will point okay. out that the lead investigator, Special Agent Track, are you aware that he was apparently fired for allegedly beating his wife after coming home from a swingers party and he'd made multiple derogatory political posts about President Trump showing political bias? Are you aware of that? I am aware of, I think, the incident you're describing uh, and action that was taken about it. Uh, to clarify, on the first part of your question, uh, Mr. D'Antuano was the special agent in charge of the office, uh, the Detroit field office, and is now the assistant director in charge of the Washington field office. For the so the guy in charge got promoted and is now in charge of the January 6th investigation? The guy in charge of the whole Detroit field office is now in charge of the whole Washington Or in other words, the answer is yes. Stephen D'Antuano, as he stated, here it is, from the FBI themselves, as soon as I can actually frame it in for you, Stephen D'Antuano, named special agent in charge of the Detroit field office, confirmation of fact, as we do here. Second from the FBI, October 13, 2020, Stephen D'Antuano named assistant director in charge of Washington field office. So they took someone embroiled in a horrible investigation completely making the FBI look terrible, terrible, entrapment, gets promoted to Washington, D.C. Of course he does. But worse than that, FBI Assistant Director in Charge Stephen D'Antuano remarks on press call regarding violence at the U.S. Capitol. Investigator involved with the J6 committee. Is there much more that needs to be said here? Involved in the Whitmer plot. Now leading the J6 committee. Mass politicization to a scale we haven't seen before. Yesterday, it was reported that Project Veritas had obtained a copy of an FBI training material which listed various symbols and themes which, in the FBI's estimation, were indicative of, quote, militia violent extremism. Now, I'm not going to play much more of that clip. Lisa did an amazing job yesterday covering this event. But as a quick recap to you and what Cruz is referring to there, so we now have someone involved in the Whitmer plot entrapping what they would call extremists. Now putting out a document, which Chris Ray says, I I'm not familiar with it. Well, if you lead the FBI and it's an FBI notification, you should be aware of it. It is your job and responsibility. But in this notification, and as Lisa covered, I'll put a link up to her video, click over to it for a little bit more detail. Things like this are, may that makes you an extremist. And symbols like this, the Cruz declares, was, is on the back of the boots he wears every day. Drop myself out of the way so you get the full impact of this. The all dangerous, don't tread on me, also extremist. But missing from that list was, of course, this symbol and this one. And as Chris Ray declares, one of the most dangerous things in the world, well, that's not on his list either. I, I wonder if he'll go further here and declare this is also the most dangerous. Director Ray, I'm deeply concerned that the FBI and the Department of Justice have become thoroughly politicized. I think this is a problem that began during the Obama administration. I think it metastasized with career officials during the Trump administration, and I think it continues and is even worse today under the Biden administration. 
I don't believe you personally reflect that politicization, but I... Uh, I'm going to stop him there for a minute because I implicitly disagree with what Cruz said there. I do believe Ray embodies that mass politicization, but he was appointed by Trump, so Cruz has to be rather careful in his statement, but a statement that would have just been better off not stated. I think you've been unwilling to root it out and unwilling to hold people accountable for the politicization. I hear regularly from FBI agents and from professionals at the Department of Justice who are dismayed that our law enforcement has been weaponized and politicized rather than remaining apolitical as it has been for the history of our country. Absolutely true statement. But again, how is this making the FBI powerful? How does it give them the ability to basically rule this nation? Well, when you get involved and when you're involved in a plot just before a major election, turns out you entrapped individuals, all individuals acquitted. Now you're putting symbols on top of everyone who represent the very same movement that you were getting involved in. Well, boy, doesn't that become a, a little bit steering? A little bit in control? Oh, I'll frame it in more for you. That also in September of 2020, Special Agent Tebow went on social media and posted a Washington Post article entitled, quote, Why the Michael Flynn case still matters. A similar answer to, to the one I gave before. Isn't it true that in November of 2020, Special Agent Tebow assistant special agent in charge of the D.C. office who allegedly worked on the uh, Trump-Russia collusion investigation and the Hunter Biden investigation, retweeted a Lincoln Project tweet that said, quote, Donald Trump is a psychological, I'm sorry, a psychologically broken, embittered, and deeply unhappy man. Now, why is this testimony relevant, you might ask? Do you have any idea what Special Agent Tebow was in charge of or is in charge of? How about the Hunter Biden laptop? Involved in the misclassification of how it was declared as evidence, delaying its appeal or its publication to the American people just before the U.S. election a ton of money that was wasted on the Russia collusion investigation. So do you agree that the allegation of secret collusion between President Trump and Russia was a hoax? Yes or no? Uh, I, I don't think that's the terminology I would use. Just stop them there. That's not the terminology I would use. Well, it's been proven that the entire dossier was, was a hoax. But maybe maybe just simply me and Christopher Ray have a, a misunderstanding or disagreement on the matter. So that's not a term I would use. Okay. Uh, do you agree that the Hunter Biden laptop was not Russia disinformation? Uh, and now you're asking about an ongoing investigation. A simple yes or no would have been more appropriate, but we can't expect a simple yes or no from the FBI, obviously. So now we have two situations. Let's call them three because the special agent in charge was also putting out social media posts against Trump. We have a Whitmer plot of entrapment just prior to the election. And then we find out later about suppression of evidence not presented to the American people just prior to the election. And if you were to somehow in any way or matter interfere in an election, technically you're helping or altering the result. By very definition, controlling a nation. So it's, it's okay to protest outside of Supreme Court Justice's home if you disagree with their potential rulings. I didn't say that. I don't so believe that. So what's the difference between the two? I think the difference is twofold. One, uh, we have to make sure that we are prioritizing and enforcing those 
uh, violations of federal criminal law that uh, are, represent the greatest threat to the public. Now we're suddenly concerned about the Constitution. An unequal standard of justice being applied. It's always the case. Case after case, evidence after evidence, statement after statement, but, you know, continually allowed. Continually allowed. But then to demonstrate this level of arrogance, thumbing his nose at not only the panel, thumbing his nose at us. Uh, only his words can even define the arrogance. Senator, I, I uh, had had a flight that I'm supposed to be hightailing it to out of here, um, and I had understood that we were going to be done at 1.30, so that was, that's how we ended up where we are. To understand the arrogance in that statement, well, that plane is paid for by you and I. It's a private plane, so he's on no time limit other than a text to the pilot saying I'm delayed, but of course he doesn't want to take any more questions. Who would want to take any more questions? Because there appears to be a lot more surfacing. Thank goodness for the whistleblowers lately. The stories we're going to cover now, well, you see them here on your screen. The pipe bomb suspect, new information, well, slowly leaking out as the FBI trickles out the information. But the story that really ignited overnight is a story about this man. And that's what we're going to continue on now with over at Restricted Republic. If you haven't joined us there, please do. Again, discount code. Don't forget this one. RR News Now monthly checkout, $1 a month for three months. And we'll show you what that platform is all about. Until next time, I love you all. Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out. <laughs>